tour of Woodbury Pewter, located in historic Woodbury, Connecticut. Woodbury Pewter is recognized as one of America's premier makers of handcrafted pewter pieces, producing over 450 different gifts, decorative accessories, and museum quality reproductions in the highest quality pewter. Over the next few minutes, you will see examples of the processes involved in the making of a pewter teapot by the highly skilled craftsmen at Woodbury Pewter. First, what is pewter? Modern pewter is a completely food-safe alloy made from 92% tin, 6% antimony, and 2% copper. These metals are melted together to make the pewter alloy and is then used in the form of brick-like ingots for casting or may be rolled in large presses to form pewter sheets and discs which are used for spinning. The touch mark is a method of identifying the maker of various pieces. Much like a signature, it usually contains the maker's name, initials, and or logo. Traditionally, the touch mark is applied using a carved steel stamp, which is stamped or hammered into the pewter piece, leaving an impression of the maker's trademark. The touch mark process has been used for hundreds of years and continues to be used by almost all pewter, silver, and gold makers to this day. Spinning is an age-old method of forming flat disks of pewter into various hollow shapes called hollow wear. The process is performed on a spinning lathe with the use of hand tools and various shaped wood or metal forms called a chuck. Flat disks of pewter are clamped into the lathe between the chuck and a wood piece called a follower. The disk is then trued up to center by hand, is lubricated, and is then ready for spinning. A hand spinning tool is pressed against the turning disk with a series of carefully executed and highly skilled sweeping movements to force the pewter down over the chuck to form the desired shape. Certain items, such as a teapot, require multiple spinning operations and the use of several chucks to create the parts for the body and lid. After spinning is completed, the pieces are carefully trimmed. Casting is the oldest known method of forming metals. The process involves turning molten metal into a solid shape as demonstrated here. However, to achieve a specific cast shape, a mold is used to control the final piece. Ingots of pewter are melted in a large cast iron pot to a temperature of 500 degrees, at which point it becomes a liquid of silvery colored metal ready for casting. The liquid pewter is then carefully poured into a two-part mold made of bronze with the use of a ladle. As the pewter enters the mold, it begins to chill or harden to the inside of the mold, which is much cooler than the pewter. After a few seconds, the mold is tipped over, allowing any metal which has not chilled to pour out of the mold and back into the pot, leaving a hollow casting inside the mold for use as a handle or spout. Solid castings are made in the same manner. However, the metal in the mold is not poured out. Instead, it remains in the mold until it is completely solid as in the case of the hinge parts for the teapot. The mold is then opened to expose the pewter casting, which is then removed. Some of the bronze molds used at Woodbury Pewter date back several hundred years, while others incorporate modern technology and are made from a special rubber, which withstands high temperatures and is used in a centrifugal casting machine. Centrifugal casting is done by pouring molten pewter into a centrifuge containing the rubber molds and allowing centrifugal force to root the metal into the cavities of the mold. The mold is then opened and the castings removed. This method of casting provides us with a cost-effective method of making several small, solid pieces at one time for items like knobs, cup handles, and ornaments. Each cast piece prior to use is carefully scraped and filed by hand to remove the seam or parting line left where the mold was joined together for casting. 
The sprues, or gates, which are the portions or ends of the casting used to channel the poured molten metal through, are cut off and remelted for use in other castings. Each casting is then skillfully ground, polished, and hand fit to the final shape required to complete the various items being made. Once the various cast and spun parts have been made, they are joined or soldered together using a tin bismuth type wire solder. While being heated with the flame from an acetylene torch, the melting solder is applied to the various parts of the area to be joined. As the pewter pieces being joined and the wire solder have a similar melting temperature, extreme skill and care is used in this operation so as not to melt the pieces being joined in the process. As the solder cools and hardens, it makes a solid bond between the parts and begins to take on the look of the finished item. Now, completely joined, the item is brought to the finishing department, where it is carefully buffed and polished by hand, using cotton wheels coated with a buffing compound to help shine the piece. Special attention is given each piece to assure that any small marks and scratches which occurred in the process are removed and to give the piece a high luster. Upon completion of the buffing and polishing, each piece which is ordered in a satin finish is scratched with a soft wire brush using a paste of pumice and water, or in the case of an order for bright finish, is repolished using a softer cotton wheel using a high shine compound. All pieces are then carefully washed, dried and inspected by hand to be sure that they meet our reputation for fine handcrafted products. We hope you have enjoyed this tour and invite you to see all the other fine pewter pieces that are crafted at Woodbury Pewter. Woodbury Pewter is available at many fine stores throughout the United States and at our factory store, located in historic Woodbury, Connecticut. If you would like additional information, a catalog, or the location of your nearest dealer, please ask one of our staff or call 1-800-648-2014. Thank you.